throughout known history, weather-related hazards or disasters like cyclones have been responsible for huge losses of lives and property. Hence, their prediction by the use of modern technology and human knowledge becomes imperative for saving human lives over this region. The understanding of these cyclones and their prediction becomes even more imperative for a country like India whose coastal districts face the maximum consequences of this high-impact weather event. In the last 300 years, out of the total number of cyclones developing on the globe, almost 75% of them, which have caused a death toll of more than 5,000 people, have occurred in India, especially the Bay of Bengal. October 29. 1999, a super cyclone with wind speed of 260 km per hour struck the Odisha coast, bringing unforeseen devastation upon the state, killing almost 10,000 people and destroying property worth more than 1,000 crores. On the monitoring aspects, uh, well, we had satellites uh, that only gave us imageries of the uh, cyclones. But we did not have uh, other uh, parameters to characterize ocean conditions and the, uh, the cyclone itself, both uh, its physical as well as dynamic parameters. The computing system was also limited and the number of numerical weather prediction guidance to the forecaster were also limited. As a result, not only the lead period of the forecast was limited to 24 hours, but also the accuracy and consistency of the forecast was not quite good at that time. The tragedy shook up the country and shifted the focus to IMD. It was beyond doubt that the outdated technology being used for cyclone prediction had proved to be the biggest hurdle in India's forecasting abilities. 14 years later, a similarly intense cyclone Thailand stuck the Odisha coast again, this time near Gopalpur on 12th October 2013. However, this time the scenario had completely changed. The state authorities had received the most accurate early warning five days in advance and they had taken the required action on time, restricting the death toll to just 21 people. If you have to have a very effective system of humanitarian assistance, perhaps you not only, uh, you not only give a state of preparedness to yourself, but also you need to be bolstered, you need to be helped by uh, early warning system. And of late, our institutions have become very, very robust, they have become very scientific, and they have become very accurate and predict predictable. So uh, that, that was the reason why we uh, successfully conducted our operations in uh, Cyclone Filene. People have been alerted to get evacuated. People have been believing those uh, signals and warnings. Some agencies predicted the further intensification of to about 300 kilometers per hour wind speed at the time of landfall. It was creating panic among the public and also among the disaster managers. So therefore, there was a tremendous pressure on the forecasters either to change the forecast or to be consistent with the forecast given by them. IMD persisted with their forecast, displaying confidence and nerve during a time of immense pressure while other agencies showed different predictions. Two screens from time to time I used to monitor the prediction given by IMD as well as I used to monitor it through US Navy. Because I had still doubt because of the, because I myself was a collector, I knew how we suffered because of the super cyclone in 99. But at the end of the day, the IMD's prediction was much more accurate. I can remember this US military or the uh, US Navy sites. They predicted the wind uh, speed will be around 280 plus. But uh, IMD stuck to 220 to uh, 230, so we got only that much speed only. 
सो आई होप यू विल कीप ऑन रिलाइंग ऑन आई एम डी साइट्स ओनली Not only had IMD saved thousands of lives, early warning system also helped in saving the government exchequer almost 500 crores. I followed uh, the international uh, meteorologist Eric Holthaus, you know, because he was also rigorously following it and all that. IMD was closer home. The international uh, meteorologist was a little far from the fact. That's when you know that they have done a pretty accurate job. the sense of skepticism was there because you have seen 1999 but the energy could be seen they were absolutely on their toes you know they left nothing to chance aise chale jane aadmi log sab mar jane wala wa gaach hoot phad ke sab kuch chhin chatra ho jana tha yahan jo tha aise bach ke kuch bach gaya main to wahan jane sab aadmi mar gaya hum dukaan mein aa gaye jayenge school mein jayega na ke hum sab ko milega anand ke topan hua ki idhar mein aayega na दुकान के कारण सब बैंगे हो गया नगे हम के लुकसन है ना दुकान में लुकसन हो गया दिस इज वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट गिवन द फिरोसिटी ऑफ द साइक्लोन एंड द फियर इट हैड जनरेटेड स्पेशली अमंग फॉरेन मेटेरियोलॉजिस्ट्स हु आर प्रेडिक्टिंग एब्सोल्युटली द वर्स्ट द इंडियन मेड डिपार्टमेंट्स प्रेडिक्शंस फॉर वंस वाज स्पॉट ऑन द मेड डिपार्टमेंट वाज स्पॉट ऑन इन इट्स प्रेडिक्शंस फार मोर एक्यूरेट देन वेस्टर्न ऑब्जर्वर्स हु फेल्ट दैट इंडिया वाज डाउन प्लेइंग द पोटेंशियल डेंजर ऑफ द साइक्लोन रात आए तूफान को हिंदुस्तान ने वाकई हरा दिया और वो इसीलिए क्योंकि हिंदुस्तान तैयारी करके बैठा था मेट्रोलॉजिकल डिपार्टमेंट ने बहुत एक्यूरेट इंफॉर्मेशन दिया है और आप तो जानते हैं 9 लाख लोग वैक्यूएट थे 36 सिक्स आवर्स में ये बहुत भारी काम है इस साइक्लोन में मौसम विभाग ने टेक्नोलॉजी का बखूबी उपयोग किया और छह तारीख से ही ये संकेत दे दिए गए थे जो अनुमान थे उतनी वेलोसिटी रही जो दिशा थी अनुमानित वही दिशा रही जो अनुमानित टाइम था वही टाइम रहा वाइल मीडिया एट होम हीप्ड प्रेजेस एट द एजेंसी फॉर सेविंग थाउजेंड्स ऑफ लाइफ डब्ल्यू एम ओ and world bank openly acknowledged its role in averting a disaster of this scale for the first time imd received a national award from indian institute of management for effectively averting a disaster india meteorological department then went on to make equally accurate predictions during other cyclones including hudhud which hit bishakhapatnam in 2014 further cementing its credibility both nationally and internationally Filin and Hudhud are not isolated successes there has been continuous improvement in cyclone forecasting in recent years the modernized early warning system of IMD includes observations monitoring analysis numerical modeling forecasting and warning dissemination there is a significant improvement in the monitoring aspects on the front of data utilization we have made significant progress and because it is through data we define the initial condition so our skill for defining the initial condition is better now and the third aspect is uh, the models uh, we have made significant improvement in uh, and numerical models and not only the the global models or the regional models but the models which are targeting the prediction of cyclones before we proceed to understand the modernization of IMD's early warning system critical to filin success story let us first understand the characteristics of a tropical cyclone Tropical cyclones develop over large bodies of relatively warm tropical water. The word tropical refers to the geographical origin of these systems, specifically over the tropical seas. A tropical cyclone is known as hurricane over North Atlantic, typhoon in North Pacific, and cyclone over Indian Ocean. A tropical cyclone can be described as a compact air mass rotating clockwise in southern hemisphere and anticlockwise in northern hemisphere with wind speed of at least 62 km/h 
around a central region of low atmospheric pressure. There are mainly two cyclone seasons in India. The first one is the pre-monsoon season from April to June. The other is the post-monsoon season from October to December. Out of every five cyclones, four occur over the Bay of Bengal and one over the Arabian Sea. Out of every five cyclones, two to three become severe and one to two become very severe cyclones. Based on the pressure drop and maximum sustained surface wind, the tropical cyclones in the North Indian Ocean Basin are divided into five categories, namely cyclonic storm, severe cyclonic storm, very severe cyclonic storm, extremely severe cyclonic storm, and lastly, a super cyclone. A mature tropical cyclone consists of an eye, which is the center of cyclone. This could be 10 to 50 kilometers in diameter. Surrounding the eye is a thick mass of clouds of around 10 to 100 kilometers, known as eye wall region. This region is the most dangerous part of the cyclone, where wind speed could go up to 250 kilometers per hour. As we move away from the wall cloud region, the clouds trail away from the eye wall region in a spiral. This area is known as the rain band region also. Cyclones, a multi-hazard event, which cause damage through rainfall occurring before the cyclone makes landfall than the heavy winds of the cyclone. And lastly, abnormal rise in sea levels, also known as a storm surge. The collapse of buildings, falling trees, flying debris, electrocution, floods, aircraft accidents and disease from contaminated food and water in the post-cyclone period are some of the effects of these cyclones. They are not only responsible for the large number of deaths of people living near the coast, but also register many far-reaching consequences for the livelihoods and the general well-being of people as well, causing severe damage to infrastructure and taking the economy of a state back by several years. There are 96 cyclone-prone districts in the country. The process of the forecast of these cyclones begins with observational data, which is acquired from different sources to determine the current location and intensity. The center of a cyclone is the center of the lowest pressure or of the anti-clockwise circulation of wind at surface level. This is because the intensity of a cyclone can be determined on the basis of the pressure drop at center or the maximum sustained wind speed due to the cyclone. Near the center of cyclone, sharp fall in pressure is registered. Space-based observations are the most important tools for any early indications of a cyclone. Since cyclones develop over the sea, and satellite is the best tool for detecting it. For this purpose, IMD uses two kinds of satellites, the geostationary and the polar orbiting satellite. The geostationary satellite gives images every 30 minutes, enabling scientists to monitor every half hourly change in position, intensity and structure of cyclone. There are currently three such satellites, Kalpna-1, INSAT 3A and INSAT 3D, made and launched by the Indian Space Research Organization. The intensity of the tropical cyclone is estimated with the help of the visual pattern that it demonstrates as visible in the satellite images. This technique is called the Vorak technique, where the estimated intensity of a tropical cyclone is put into a scale of 1 to 8. So T1.0 is a low pressure area, 1.5 is depression, 2.0 deep depression, 2.5 cyclonic storm, 3.5 severe cyclonic storm, 4.0 very severe cyclonic storm, 5.0 extremely severe cyclonic storm and 6.5 super cyclonic storm. 
India Meteorological Department acquires data from American NOAA and European Polar Orbiting Satellites. These products help in better understanding of cyclones and also provides surface wind over the oceanic region. So it sees different area. So every, you cannot have the same area coverage by one polar orbiting satellite. While geosynchronous, every time it sees the same area. So both, have, both are uh, worldwide, they are used in combination. When the cyclone comes closer to the coast, within the radar range, the radar observations are given priority to determine the genesis, location and intensity of the cyclone. IMD has been using analog radar technology for many years, but since 2002, it has acquired the Doppler radar as well. Currently, there are 24 Doppler weather radars that provide imageries in every 10 minutes and hence structure of cyclone. So it is able to provide the vertical structure of the cyclone that how tall is the cyclone is because it is another parameter for intensity of cyclone. Moreover, the diameter of the eye is another important parameter which can be seen very clearly from the Doppler weather radar. So when the Doppler radar is watching from a distance of say 200-300 kilometers, it is giving a very good information regarding its prediction for its movement, for its intensity, for a storm surge and for what kind of the destruction potential is there. Earlier only the uh, uh, information about the uh, precipitation was available and the about the cloud or system. Now, not only the precipitation quantitatively that this much of the rainfall is expected, say around 200 kilometers per hour winds are, are available in the particular system like filing. So Doppler radar can provide those informations which were not available earlier. As the cyclone moves closer to the coast, they can be observed through coastal observatories, automated weather stations and buoys stationed at sea. India has a vast network of manned observatories and automatic weather stations. The data which are received from the different sources are received at the National Meteorological Telecommunications Center at New Delhi and then disseminated to different user groups. Currently, this data is available to a forecaster within 10 minutes of observations, unlike three hours or more taken 10 years back. Nationally, we have total six automatic message switching systems installed at uh, six airports. All this meteorological data is vast and complex in nature, as it is collected frequently throughout the globe. This data is processed with the help of a high-power computing system once processed, this observational data is put through a numerical weather prediction model to get a forecast. These results or forecasts may differ from model to model as each of them have different characteristics like data used, method of data assimilation, region of modeling, physics used in the model and also the resolution. The forecasts generated by the different models are available in binary format which are converted into pictorial or graphic format through the use of softwares. This makes it easy for a forecaster to be able to see the predictions at one glance. This forecast is available every six hours up to five days. After determining the initial location and intensity, it is attempted to forecast the official track and intensity by comparing different model forecasts. The numerical model forecasts may differ from each other. Hence, the forecaster utilizes the experience, expertise and the decision support system to arrive at final decision. Considering recent development in prediction capability, IMD introduced the Objective Cyclone Track Forecast valid for next 72 hours in 2009 and up to 120 hours in 2013. Heavy rainfall due to cyclone is monitored with satellite and radar, automatic weather station and ARG-based rainfall and satellite rain gauge merged rainfall data set. The storm surge is monitored with the help of tide gauges and coastal buoys. 
the forecast of storm surge is issued by IMD based on IMD Nomogram Ghosh model, IIT Delhi model and INCOIS Hyderabad model. In case of a tropical cyclone, a forecaster initially looks at each and every model forecast to find out which model best suits to the initial condition of the today. If a model has picked up the initial condition of today, then it can be assumed that it can provide the better forecast for tomorrow or day after tomorrow. In the second approach, a forecaster depends on his expertise in choosing the best model based on past experiences in case the best model is differing in the initial conditions of today those conditions are adjusted statistically the consensus is built up from the different model results for example through the multi-model ensemble technique for predicting cyclone track or a dynamical statistical model technique for predicting its intensity the single model based ensemble prediction system which is also referred to for estimating the strike probability of a cyclone near a coast. So no model is perfect as I mentioned and also no model is consistent for all cyclones. That is also important. So that's why we need that ensemble. It is important to note here that the final forecast which is arrived at is the result of both scientific techniques as well as human expertise. The value of either cannot be underestimated when discussing the accuracy of weather forecasts. After the forecaster has made the final decision, the forecast is issued to the public and specific user groups in the form of textual or graphic bulletins. These bulletins consist of all relevant information about current status like location and intensity, expected cyclone landfall point in time, expected adverse weather like heavy rainfall, gale wind and storm surge, area to be affected, damage expected and action suggested. They are issued in every three hours. These bulletins are issued separately for different users like general public, fishermen, farmers, coastal authorities, disaster managers, etc. Bulletins are disseminated through various means including website and other electronic media like emails, SMSs and fax as well as social media like Facebook and Twitter along with the daily press release. Press conferences are also organized to trigger the general public and disaster managers for suitable action. The state and central governments make required arrangements in case people need to be informed or evacuated and shifted to cyclone shelters. National Crisis Management Committee, this is headed by the Cabinet Secretary. As soon as there is a warning for this and as so not, we do not wait up to the actual landfall or landfall of cyclone. Actually, two days, three days prior to it, the meeting of NCMC takes. In the NCMC, all relevant ministries are represented. Defense, Home Ministry, Health Ministry, Power Ministry, Telecom, obviously NDMA is also represented. And these meetings of the NCMC are also participated by the government of the concerned state government. So the chief secretary and other officers of that state government also participate through video conferencing. So we take stock, the cabinet secretary takes stock of the situation and whatever are the requirements of the state government, they, those requirements are met. So we extend whatever help is required. To reach out to the last mile, the people living at the coast are duly informed through regular cyclone warnings in media and through SMSs issued by Cyclone Warning Division at Delhi and Cyclone Warning Centers located at Kolkata, Chennai, Mumbai, Bhuvaneshwar, Vishakhapatnam and Ahmedabad. And a government official, often a tehsildar, is assigned to physically inform coastal population about the cyclone. Whenever we receive information from, let us say, from SRC office, so we we start uh, monitoring on at our level also. We immediately conduct a district disaster management authority meeting. Then we call all the line line department people, where we need to put the ODRF, uh, the disaster response force, also NDRF, and if necessary, the uh, army and navy people also. They also come to help us in that way. 
Considering the case of Phylon, the numerical weather prediction model on 3rd October sensed that a circulation from South China Sea moving towards the Andaman Sea would become a depression on 8th October. IMD then geared up all its resources in monitoring the system. On 8th itself, the Med Department predicted that system will intensify into a very severe cyclonic storm and will make a landfall at Gopalpur on 12th evening. Regular bulletins were issued to central and state governments of Andhra and Odisha. The central and state authorities immediately started preparing for evacuation of the people living at coastal areas. They had received a lead time of five days which was ample time for them to send out alerts to people to evacuate. The relief commissioner's office made arrangements to shift people into nearby cyclone shelters and schools. While the Andhra and Odisha state government deployed the state disaster response forces and the national disaster response force was deployed by the central government, which ultimately resulted in what was to be the largest evacuation in India's history. So the minute the cyclone blew over, uh, we were pressed into service uh, for uh, opening the roads firstly, opening the harbour itself, checking whether the harbour was safe for ships to enter or leave, uh, providing uh, succour to the people outside. Immediately food packets were airdropped, medical aid was given. Uh, the uh, local administration uh, was contacted. Uh, we set up a joint uh, operation centre. Uh, with the local administration and then from them we started to get inputs as to where the critical requirements are for search and rescue. Post the disaster of 1999, India's early warning system has come a long way with extraordinary technological advancements and a much improved and well-connected infrastructure. The most accurate predictions and saving of thousands of lives during recent cyclones Phylon and Hudhud stand testimony to India's constant efforts to create a robust early warning system. However, this is not an end to the journey of success. There are still challenges in cyclone predictions over this region. The most important challenge uh, in the international arena is the intensity forecast. Most of the numerical models fail to predict the rapid intensification and rapid weakening especially if the rapid intensification is occurring nearby to the coast, it becomes more disastrous. The performance of the numerical models in prediction of heavy rainfall is also not uh, so good. And as you know, the heavy rainfall causes the floods leading to loss of life and property. So therefore, the second most challenging aspect is the improvement of heavy rainfall. So far, we don't have any observations from the cyclones. We are having all peripheral observations, so therefore you need to send uh, airborne sensors into the cyclone and take sorties and, and take observations. Then you need to have uh, further improve the models. And in order to the, uh, further improving the model, you are required to have a better assimilation of these finest observations into the model, which is again very stupendous task. So these are in, in uh, uh, future sites of our operational forecasters. Natural hazards like cyclones cannot be avoided, but India's meteorological department's early warning system and the country's overall disaster preparedness ensures that their impact can be controlled and precious lives are not lost. Going further, India Meteorological Department looks towards further enhancement of their expertise to make accurate and timely forecasts.